the second part of my uh, GMT delivery in early January, one that I've been eagerly awaiting, looking forward to. Next Door Poland, second edition. Next Door Series Supplement number three. Um, I'm a huge Next Door fan. Uh, I really love um, all of the games that I have played uh, in the system. <clears throat> I learned on India Pakistan. I've played Vietnam, um, and I have played one of the other ones that I can't think of right now. But um, when I found out that Poland was getting a second edition with an updated order of battle um, and some additional counters, um, I was super excited. This is the one that I've wanted to play the most. I, I don't think I've played this one yet. And like Vietnam, it is um, pretty monstrous. It's uh, got a, a tactical map that they've then added to in this edition and a strategic map like you saw in Vietnam. We've also got supplement number three. So this is the third supplement for Next War. And what these supplements do is add additional uh, rules options, uh, scenarios, counters, um, lots of different things that you can add to your next door games. The first supplement was all about the alternate air system, which I'll talk about a little bit. Supp and uh, I believe Cyber Warfare might have been in that one. I think, or or it was in number two. Number two definitely had insurgency rules. So if you wanted, to, there were scenarios for other next door games where you could play. You know, after the war was over, it became an insurgency. Uh, that was really interesting. Came up, uh, came with some alternate rules about uh, anti aircraft weapons and and a whole lot of stuff. What it really is is a way to expand your game in ways that you might be interested in doing with new units, optional rules, optional units, and all sorts of things. So so we'll go through this. I'm going to save the supplement for last. Uh, there is a bit of overlap between Poland Second Edition and supplement three and you'll see why that is but let's talk about Poland and what's in this box um so we've got a sturdy sturdy uh, box from GMT it's like that bulletproof style thick thick box um next war Poland obviously as you uh, are probably aware it's about uh, Russia invading Poland through the Suwalki Gap um, so we've got the game-specific rules for Next War Poland 2nd Edition. Uh, this is a very complex game system, especially if you are playing the advanced rules. The standard rules um, are actually not too bad. Um, a lot of concepts would be familiar to Hex Encounter gamers, but when you get into the advanced rules... Um, let's see, where do they... The advanced rules start... Okay, so the basic rules end on page 17. So not a huge rule book. Or, excuse me. Page... Well, this is specific... Oh, these are the game-specific rules. Excuse me. All right, so yeah, Poland's got a lot of game-specific rules. Uh, you know, we're already up to page 19, 20. 20 pages of specific rules for Poland. Um, so there's a lot going on here. Um, has a lot to do with how countries uh, enter, because there's a lot of nations represented in this game. Um, and uh, air power, rail, Kaliningrad is obviously a huge portion of, of this. So these are the game-specific rules. There's also scenarios. Usually there's three standard game scenarios and three advanced game scenarios based on sort of plausible ways that these um, forces would uh, start conflict. Um, so looking at the advanced game scenarios, we have got, uh, well, these are rules just about advanced game scenarios. So we've got strategic surprise. Usually there's an extended buildup scenario, tactical surprise, and talks all about reinforcements, extended buildup. Yeah, there you go. Um, so some supplemental rules, some designer's notes, and on the back, uh, talking about theater weapons. This is actually a very useful diagram that I don't think I have seen um, in any of the other Next War games, but it tells you about cruise missiles. There's a lot of rules around cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, what aircraft can carry those missiles. It's organized by uh, allied versus non-allied, which aircraft can do that. That's handy to have. I noticed there's a lot more player aids in this one. All right, now let's get to what I was talking about. Okay, standard and advanced game series rules. This is a 48-page rules booklet. The standard game rules go up until page 22, okay? So not huge, um, but certainly not small. And then we get to the advanced game rules. So it's about another 20 pages, 22 pages, 26 pages really, um, of advancing, advanced game rules. These add the air system, which is extremely heavyweight, becomes a huge phase in the game. Uh, talking about detection, talking about naval, advanced naval rules, point detection, naval air defense, uh, HQs, artillery, formations, those get added. Uh, bridging, uh, supply becomes less abstract um, in the advanced game uh, because you've got depots and MSUs. Um, you've got emergency resupply. You've got special ops. That becomes a whole phase in the game, so you can spend your, uh, send your special ops forces on missions, and there's a lot of latitude about what you can do with them. Um, you can see here that there's like eight, nine different potential targets for the types of missions that they can do. Um, and these interact in, in different ways with other parts of the game. Um, learning to play Next War well is uh, just it takes time and investment. Um, but it is very rewarding and uh, very cool. There's nothing really like it. Um, 
uh, especially when it comes to like having the air modern modern warfare um, with all of the associated dimensions that modern warfare requires. Here's some more on theater weapons. Um, UN resolutions. There's a whole system in the game where the UN can force a ceasefire and then one side can violate it at the expense of victory points or it can end the game. Um, so yeah, there's just, there's a lot going on here. Um, some counter examples. So these are the two rule books on the back here. We've got, this came with next for Vietnam as well, but it's the naval movement chart. The naval stuff in this game is pretty abstract and is like the hardest to remember exactly. As you can see this flow chart based on how you're moving with naval units and what space they're going into that will depend on whether what happens it's um it's it's okay i'm not the biggest fan of the naval stuff in this game but most of the game taught it all right so new to next war poland second edition i believe is the gotland island this is the island off of sweden and bornholm here um so this becomes a playable area in the game which is cool uh this is just an eight and a half by eleven sheet and then we've got uh, this, which I believe is a map extension that adds Kaliningrad. I do not believe this was in Next Door Poland 1st edition. So this is going to be an extension on the north edge of the map that's going to cover, uh, it's going to add Kaliningrad and it's going to add parts of uh, Lithuania uh, to the map as well. So there's a Kaliningrad rail line that's obviously very important as we're seeing now with the conflict in Ukraine and the railroad that goes through Lithuania to Kaliningrad. So this is an, a map extension that gets added to the tactical map in Next War Poland. Here is the strategic map. Um, the strategic map is going to contain your air display. So each side is going to have uh, their, their aircraft and uh, whether they're ready, flown, and so forth. It's also going to have all of the game tracks on it. You're going to have your surrendered units, your special forces that are available. Um, you're going to have um, your air superiority level, the weather, the initiative, air defense tracks, AWACS advantage submarines, all of the stuff that makes this system go. And then we've got three quarters of this map as the strategic display of Europe in general. So you're going to be tracking the movement of troops throughout these various areas. Here's the inset map of Gotland. Uh, that'll go there, Bornholm down here. Um, and so this, there's a lot going on here where you're going to be bringing units strategically in different locations into the tactical map. And the tactical map is going to be, uh, I believe, here. I believe that's what that represents. So um, different scales, different levels of what's happening. Uh, this was in for, uh, Next Door 1st Edition as well. Next Door Poland 1st Edition as well. Um, so you're going to need a lot of table space for this game. That's uh, That's what it comes down to. Here's the tactical map. Um, this is your, you know, your hex encounter um, a place where your units are going to um, do battle, um, and your, most of the game is going to be played. Uh, as you can see, we've got Poland here. So the extension is actually going to go on this north part of the map. So Kaliningrad will be up in. Well, Kaliningrad is right there, but we'll have terrain above that. And then uh, obviously off to the east here, we're going to have Russian units coming on uh, from this direction, from the strategic map, I believe. And then, uh, yeah, so there's there's um, quite a bit happening in this game, but Next War is one of those sort of monsterish games. Then we've got counter sheets. There's a lot of interesting stuff on here. They've updated the order of battle for Next War Poland 2nd Edition. Here you can see we've got uh, lots of Russians. Uh, these are the different formations, 7th Guards, 98th Guards, um, all the HQ, so it's formations, all the formations here, some aircraft. Um, and then we've got different nationalities of other um, uh, other units. So I believe the gray here is German. I believe these are US Navy or US Marines, I should say. Um, yeah, Commonwealth, uh, British, I should say. Um, Italian, it looks like. So there's a lot of nationalities that can, can join the conflict. These are Poles, it would appear. Um, and a lot of markers for things, so uh, NATO paradrop, NATO units actually as well, uh, which is cool. Um, there are special, well, I'll get to this, but there's rules uh, in the supplement that actually um, give you the opportunity to play this game if Finland and Sweden are part of NATO, which was not the case in the first edition, which I think is really cool to reflect the current events going on. Uh, more counters here, more markers. Looks like uh, these, uh, these are Lithuanian units. These might also be NATO or Polish, can't tell. Um... These appear to be Germans, yep. Spain in yellow. So you can really get a lot of Western Europe in here. Netherlands, the Dutch in orange. Italy, Denmark, obviously they're nearby. Estonia. Um, and these light blue appear to be, maybe these are NATO? Yeah, these are NATO. So NATO's got their own stuff, which is cool. British and French 
here. Um, and not every country, I believe, will be in every scenario. Um, I, in, at least in the other games, it's uh, dependent on a lot of different factors, which part of, makes, part of what makes the game really cool is that every time you play, you get kind of the same scenario might result in different things. In Vietnam, there's a lot of variability about how the Southeast Asian nations, um, whether they come into the game or not, and who they align with, the Chinese or Vietnamese. So I imagine it's very similar here. More Russians, more Russian aircraft. We've got the Belarusians down here in black. Okay, U.S., uh, U.S. Marines in gray, U.S. Navy in blue, I believe, or is that Air Force? Maybe it's Navy in gray and Air Force in blue. That's probably more more accurate because we I see F-16s here. U.S. Army in light green, and I think actually these are the Marines. Okay, so Marines are dark green, Army is light green, Navy is gray, and um, uh, Air Force is blue. Uh, if I remember my next word, Vietnam colors correctly. Um, we've got more. This is the fourth counter sheet. Looks like we've got Canadian units here. Um, more U.S. Here's Belgian, Belgian aircraft and special forces. All right, and then we get a bunch of counters um, of aircraft for other games that in the Next War series. So these are replacement counters, um, basically upgrades to the A-10s in all those games. So uh, there's six A-10s for North uh, Next War Korea, uh, second edition, so you'll put those in there. This one is uh, Next War Taiwan, and this one is Next War Vietnam. So you'll just replace the A-10s that are not all weather with these A-10s that are all weather. Swedish units, uh, and then of course lots of markers. Detection, um, these are control markers, these are clearing markers. The system features a really cool thing where you don't just move through a city to take it over, you have to actually send units into a city, into urban areas, and um, every turn you'll draw these clearing markers and you're trying to get a certain value when you try and clear them. And a lot of the time, your units, if you don't do it properly, will get bogged down trying to clear urban areas and get um, stuck and slow down your offensive. One of the things I really like about this system is the idea that modern warfare in urban areas is extremely time consuming and resource intensive. So that's what these are. You draw these randomly, and on the other side, they've got numbers on them. We've also got uh, markers. So this is your general game markers, um, strikes or hits, um, destroyed bridges, and so forth. Interdiction, out of supply, all the stuff you'd come to expect. So those are all. That's all the counter sheets uh, for next war pull and second edition. Then we've got the setup cards. This is for the NATO and the U.S. Here's the reinforcement schedule for the game. That's very handy. Uh, we have got the standard sequence of play. So if you're playing the standard game, this is the sequence of play you're going to follow. Obviously, looks there's a lot here, and this is nothing compared to the advanced game. But this is your basic. You know, if you're playing next door for the first time, start here because this will give you all the all the fundamentals you need to build on top of. We've got the advanced air game, uh, air defense resolution here. So based on what kinds of missions are being flown in which airspace, that will determine and which aircraft that will determine what kind of air defense you're doing. Typically, you're doing uh, mostly uh, you're doing mostly the top of this chart here, um, but in certain situations when you're doing um, like uh, transporting units by air, you will use sort of the middle. It looks like a lot. It's actually not that difficult. Here's the advanced game sequence of play, and it is two sides. This is one turn. Doing every single step here, 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 and here is one turn. Turns are basically an all-afternoon uh, affair unless you're really uh, adept at playing Next War um, with someone. So, uh, you know, we played a game of Next War um, India-Pakistan uh, that took us, I think we ended on turn five, and that took us three sessions. Um, so it's it's not a short game. <laughs> We've got uh, two terrain effects charts here, plus on the other side, the CRT, uh, which is useful, all the modifiers and so forth. There's two of those. We've got the standard and advanced game tables. This is an important player aid because it's got all the tables you'll need for everything that you're doing. C, movement, clearing ops, like I mentioned, para drops, uh, what happens when you lose an airbase or airfield, replacement uh, menu. Uh, on the other side, uh, this is the standard game table. So if you're playing the standard game, all of the air stuff is abstracted into these tables. You'll use those. This is a player aid for um, strategic movement and where you can enter the tactical map from the strategic map, um, which is cool. And here's a little reference on all of the special air defense weapons that both sides have and what they can target. On the back, we've got a strike effects table. This is a player aid that's very important because it tells you when you do a hit to a specific thing, what the effect of that hit is. Basically, there's three status of being hit, strike one, strike two, and destroyed. And uh, those have different effects based on if you're hitting units, um, HQs, supply depots, airbase installations, and so forth, uh, naval units, and, and all of that. So very handy, quick reference here. It's a lot to try and memorize. And then lines of communication just gives you your supply length um, from one unit to another. Again, very handy player aid there. We've got the advanced game tables. This is a fold out. If you're playing the advanced game, you can see how much more is going on here. Here's a, a chart for just special ops. And you, the way you read this is 
what terrain you're in, what you're targeting, and what your mission is. So if you are raiding a mobile supply unit in Highland Woods, you'll be rolling on this table here, which is better, right? Because your special ops will be hard to detect versus in flat, it'll be easier to detect. They can also recon and do other things. Um, reminders about isolated and out of supply. Light infantry can do some special stuff. This is special to next war Poland, uh, Article 5 of NATO. So that obviously calls all the allies in. Um, and then inside, you've got your air defense fire table. You've got your advanced detection table. So when you're trying to detect um, air missions uh, that are being flown against you, air combat, here's your strike table. So if your air combat is successful and you get through and do get to do a strike on something, this will tell you how to resolve that. And then on the back, you've got your interdiction table. Um for interdicting supply and so forth, and uh, electronic detection and damage and automatic victory roll, emergency supply and collateral damage. So if you do do a hit to some sort of um, facility or, or installation, it tells you what happens there. What I like is just kind of this quantum information state about where air units are based. You don't actually base your air units at specific air bases. It's just kind of generally abstracted. So when you hit an air base, there's a chance that some amount of aircraft are destroyed. And based on the results you get, either you or your opponent will get to choose which air units there are. So it's kind of cool. Um, huh, more another advanced game tables player aid and a D10, which is what you need to play next door Poland. That is everything in the box here. Um, it is a lot, uh, but it is extremely fun. Um, in, in terms of modeling uh, modern combat, um, it is extremely detailed. Um, a lot of options to play the game the way you would like. And, um, you know, once you get the hang of it, it's actually pretty self-contained uh, in terms of like each, the, the sequence of play. You're, you don't have to memorize the entire sequence every turn. You just move one by one through each sort of phase and you do the things. The real trick to getting good is how you use those phases to accomplish the goals and keep your offensive moving. So that's Next Door Poland 2nd Edition. Very excited to play this. Looks to be about maybe just a half a notch heavier than Next Door Vietnam, but same basic scope. And then we've got the Next War Supplement number three. So like I said, this is going to add a bunch of optional things for your game, plus some stuff that updates some specific rules. So um, what's interesting about Supplement number three is it actually serves also as an upgrade kit if you own Next War Poland 1st Edition. So before I flip through this, this does come, the supplement does come with the Next War Poland 2nd Edition game-specific rules, so you can update your game with that. It does come with a counter sheet, two counter sheets? Uh, no, it comes with one counter sheet to upgrade the order of battle for Next War Poland 1st Edition with all of the new units um, correct for each nation that gets them in 2nd Edition. So these two things you're going to need for Next War Poland if you have 1st Edition. Those come in the supplement. Then you've got a counter sheet for the supplement that adds a whole bunch of optional units and upgraded units uh, or replacement units for other um, games in the series. Um, so you can see here we actually have a whole bunch of um, Nor uh, Next War Korea 2nd uh, Edition updates. These look like uh, South or, uh, Republic of Korea units, so it looks like we may have to do some counter replacement there. We've got some extra counters for Next War India Pakistan. This is um, basically around the rules for uh, S400 anti-air batteries for that game. You can add them. Um, it's sort of a development since that game was released to reflect you know what's happening right now. We've got some American stealth bombers. Not sure where those are going to go, maybe in Next War Korea. Um, and then we've got cyber warfare markers. Um, we've got a Pakistani J-17 for Next War India Pakistan. It looks like all the red stuff here are Chinese for Next War Taiwan. So if you own Next War Taiwan, there's only been one printing of that game, you're going to want these to put all of these red units in there. Um, here we have got um, Next War Taiwan uh, American Army, uh, or excuse me. So this beachhead unit is for Next War Taiwan. The rest of these units are for Next War Korea 2nd Edition for all the U.S. Uh, stuff. It looks like um, here, next war Poland first edition. Uh, you're going to want to use these American naval aircraft to replace those. French cyber warfare. Some more units here for uh, next war Poland first edition. Uh, Malaysia cyber warfare for next war Vietnam. There's a lot here. It's labeled, but there's a lot here for other games. Um, this is next uh, next war. Poland 2E and India Pakistan. Oh, so these are the cyber war. Uh, no, those are. Hmm. Oh, Finland. Interesting. So it's for next door Poland. You can add Finland. Yeah, so that must be the rules if they're part of NATO. Australian aircraft. Those are all optional. They have the star. Um, next war uh, series insurgency. So these are markers for the insurgency rule. Indonesia, Thailand, and uh, DPRK cyber warfare markers, Philippines stuff for Next War Vietnam. Uh, yeah, there's uh, here's some more Next War Poland 1st Edition. So uh, I guess there's stuff on here that if you have Next War Poland 1st Edition, you're also going to need.
And then, of course, it's going to come with the extension maps that come in the box of second edition, so you can upgrade your first edition game. And it's going to come with this uh, the strategic map as well. So you're upgrading um, a ton of the maps uh, and components in Next Door Poland first edition if you buy this supplement. Now, the last thing this comes with that I really like is uh, an advan a general advanced sequence of play uh, from Supplement 3. So this is everything. If you decide to play with everything in the game, you can use this sequence of play for any Next War game. And it does include the um, Electronic Warfare phase. So if you're playing with that option module, optional module, the Cyber Warfare, you has it here. And... Um, covers basically any uh, potential special phase in any of the other games. Some of them have subs, some of them don't, but that's all on here. So that's really nice. This will serve as a, a second sequence of play for someone you might be playing face-to-face -face with. That's really good. And then here's the um, the allied um, cyberspace and the... There's two of these, actually. There's a non-allied cyberspace and allied cyberspace. So this is all for the cyber warfare rules. Um, there's This is a whole separate game in and of itself when you're doing... Um, Electronic Warfare. Um, so the game models that as well. I have not played with the Electronic Warfare yet. Um, I understand it's kind of cool, um, but there's just already a lot of game in Next War, so I haven't tackled that. All right, let's talk about what comes in supplement number three. So obviously the Poland update. We've also got uh, changes and reinforcements for Next War India Pakistan, some stuff for Next War Taiwan, uh, Next War Korea talks about what's being updated there, counters, some Japanese aircraft, some Australian aircraft. New optional rules. So for these games that use the Pacific Naval Display, you've got carrier killer units, look like uh, PRC carrier killer units. That's interesting. That makes Next War Vietnam probably really dangerous, uh, the naval game, which is cool. Uh, tells you how to use them. We've got uh, the USMC Littoral Regiment. This is like a new concept that the US Navy or US Marines is uh, exploring right now. This allows you to use that and models it in the game um, with the, with the uh, Littoral Regiment rules. Um, then a bunch of optional stuff, um, PRC carrier stealth plane. So if the, if the Chinese actually do have stealth aircraft, you can have that in the game. Next door, Korea, optional Marines, tanker support, a bunch of stuff for Korea. Um, continued clearing operations. So this changes how clearing urban areas, um, which is interesting. I'm going to take a look at this and see exactly, um, exactly what it does. Um, Extreme range missiles. I mean, there's just so much here, right? Like anything that's like modern or cutting edge can be modeled in the game. Um, different effects of strikes on mobile supply units. Um, SAM fire and, and versus air stuff. These are all optional. You can add to the game and they tell you, you know, if you're using these rules, if there's a victory point adjustment because it balances one side to the other. Let's see if I can find one. Yeah, so here. So if Canada, um, how Canada chooses... Um, <laughs> Interesting. So how Canada chooses to deploy in, in either of these two games, India, Pakistan, or Poland, and this would give victory points if they choose to do that to the uh, non-allied player, the non-democratic player, let's say. Uh, next War Poland, here's the rules about Sweden and Finland being in NATO, which is cool. This also gives victory points to the non-allied side because obviously the game was designed before that was a reality. And so much more. SAM batteries and THAAD, um, you know, how you can use SAM batteries submarine rules update so uh to vietnam specifically but also just in general there's also um so in supplement one i mentioned the advanced air game which is more of a chip pull system rather than fighting each individual aircraft combat one by one you can do sort of a uh, air package system where you draw chits out of a cup this updates those rules so if you're playing with the advanced air game system you need to use these new rules for that um lot here <laughs> that's a fairly significant portion of that um, new cyber warfare rules. So if you are going to play with cyber warfare, the rules here are going to be, um, an alternative to the, uh, supplement one rules. So there's, and I believe that's what these, these charts are for here is the new cyber warfare rules, which looks like it's a little more involved because that's the one thing this game system needed hacking and so forth. Um, and then here is a next door Vietnam, um, insurgency scenario. So if you would like to play that China is successful in conquering Vietnam and then tries to hold it against the insurgency, uh, this is a scenario for you to play there. And there's some cool rules around that. On the back, charts for the new, um, charts for air defense fire. We're using the new, uh, or the, uh, the uh, optional air system rules um, and some reminders about uh, which game, how far away THAAD affects things. So, um, this may be a little overwhelming for you, and there's a lot here, but I'm very excited to own Next War Poland. Definitely want to play this one this year. Um, my buddy who I taught to play this game really loved it. We did India-Pakistan. I want to take him, I want to level him up, take him to the next step, and, uh, and play some Next War Poland. 
at some point with some of the new stuff. Uh, so there you go. Hope you enjoyed this. Sorry that it was a little long winded, but I felt like you'd want to see what's in next door supplement series three and what comes in the box for Poland. And, uh, yeah, that's probably the last unboxing video I will do for a bit. Um, we're going to get into some gameplay stuff coming up.